Welcome to another Activating Abundance episode of Not Your Average Lives. And today I'm coming to you from St. Augustine, Florida, where I am for three weeks. And I tell you, it is nice to be in a place in the middle of winter that's warmer than where I live. So I will say though that I think yesterday it was only like three degrees difference because it's unseasonably warm where I live yesterday but it's supposed to snow there tomorrow and it's not going to snow here. So that's all I care about. So anyways, um, if you're watching me on video on my YouTube channel and my husband might walk in because he has no idea I'm recording a podcast episode right now and he um, is getting ready to watch a basketball game. So he'll probably be looking for me to say the game is on. So anyways, I just want to do this quick episode. I don't think it's going to go as long as some of my episodes do. But I wanted to do this because it's about birthdays and it's about birthdays because my birthday is coming up. So, and this episode is a day late because I've just been here in Florida and other things have taken priority. So I want to get my uh, abundance episode that I've committed to doing once a week out, but it is a day late. So I apologize for that, but it's, it's two days before my birthday when I'm recording this. And I thought it would be a good thing to talk about because I love birthdays and I especially love my birthday. And I feel so happy and excited um, that I was born on a very special day uh, because one of the neatest things about my birthday, and I want to talk about birthdays because you can activate abundance with every birthday. And sometimes the older we get, the more we feel like time is ticking and we don't have much time left. We focus so much on the birthdays that, you know, oh, like this might be my last birthday or I don't have many birthdays left or I can't do the things I used to do or whatever you think about when you get, when you think I'm getting old, right? And so I thought, well, how can we reframe our, our, our senior birthdays as we get older and make them feel like how rich we are with to still have breath, to still have what we have going forward. Um, and, and how can we kind of reframe it? So it's not like just, oh my gosh, another year older. It's like another year of something to look forward to, you know, another year of newness, because yeah, that's one of the things I like about Mondays is we're always starting fresh every Monday, right? The first day of a new month, we're always starting fresh. And so like, like, let's take that to our birthday and put, put that kind of positive spin on it. So, but my birthday is on Valentine's day. And so one of the things that I love about my birthday is that it's not just about me. And I think we can get really caught up in, oh my God, it's my birthday and nobody said happy birthday to me. Well, I tell you having a birthday on a holiday, well, Valentine's day isn't really a holiday, but you know, people, it's a day that people remember. And so I get so many birthday messages because people just remember my birthday. And what is so fun about it is that I get to wish somebody something special on that day too. So they wish me happy birthday. I get to wish them happy Valentine's day. And I get to give gifts. So, so like when I get a gift from my husband, I get to get, you know, I get to think about him and th- give, give him something in return. So I love the fact that my birthday, it, it, that, that, that is abundant, right? When you are, when it, when you give something um, without expecting to be re- re- receive something, although on your birthday, you probably expect to receive something. So maybe that's not quite correct in this situation, but I, f- I just get, I feel so it's my birthdays are so much fun because I get to make people feel good, you know, and, and when they remember me, I can, I can give back in some way because it's, it's a special day. Um, I do have to fight to get a good restaurant reservation. So I have made it clear, uh, that it's important to plan ahead. So that is my number two. So number one, so I'm thinking about the ways to be, be abundant and think about abundance in your birthday. And how can you bring more of that is number one, like do something nice for somebody on your day and not just have it be about you. Um, so it's been really easy for me because of having the day that I have, but also plan ahead, plan ahead because 
you know, my, my philosophy is don't wait to be disappointed. You know, don't put it on somebody else. Like if you, if you really want your birthday to be special, then plan ahead, like get it done. And so that's for me, cause I, my birthday's on Valentine's day. If I want to have a nice dinner and I want to go out and I love to go out to dinner on my birthday, then you have to make sure that whoever's responsible <laughs> is, is doing what they need to do. So like around two weeks before, I'm like, did you make reservations? Did you make reservations? One thing fun that I love about my husband is he always surprises me. So, whereas I might be the one that's like, you know, making sure, and he's learned, but you know, it's, it's a second marriage. So when I married him, I had to make sure that he knew that Valentine's day is a day that you have to plan ahead. So, so I would always say now he's, he's pretty much knows after 12 years of being married, but, um, you know, it's something there where you have to say, you know, okay, you know, you need to make reservations. <laughs> But he always surprises me. So we get in the car and I don't have no idea where we're going and he never disappoints and it's always fun. And it doesn't always have to be super fancy because we're pretty casual people, but I love that surprise. But I will say that because I don't want to have disappointments, I'm like making sure that, okay, something's, something's being done <laughs> because, because this is my birthday. It's something to be done. Right. So it's funny because too, you, you know, and if, if like planning ahead can be exactly like what is happening right now. So we are in a bed and breakfast or not a bed and breakfast, an Airbnb for three weeks. And this was a conversation that started taking place last summer. And we have some friends and it was actually their idea and brought it up. And I thought, wow, wouldn't that be great to spend February, my birthday month in Florida? Cause like after December and January and being in the cold, like who wouldn't want to be someplace warmer after all that time. And this past January, we had like, it was really cold and snowstorms. So, uh, so that was something, an, an example of planning ahead. And, and I thought also how much fun would it, would it be to like be with your other people? Like you're staying someplace and it's, it's going to be fun. Right. So for three weeks, and you, you know, that's the other question. Do you, do you believe in birthday weeks or birthday months? Because I think that is a lot of fun too. You can, you can, you can squeeze as much as you can out of that. So I always, I'm like, and, and my birthday this year is on a Monday. So I'm like, okay, birthday week, definitely. But because we're here for three weeks, it's like, might, might as well make it a birthday month. I keep reminding my husband, it's my birthday month. Although he'll get tired of it after a few days, but yeah. So it's like, make sure you plan ahead. I remember when, uh, I got engaged to my husband when I was 49 and he came to me and this is me trying to be a good fiance. He came to me, um, a few months before my, I, I turned 50 and he said, and we had planned to get married the following summer. And he said, oh, he's a rugby guy. And so he had, there was a rugby tournament in Las Vegas. And he said, oh, there, it's going to be that Valentine's weekend. Do you mind if I go? So as many women do, I said, no, I, I don't mind, but I really did mind. <laughs> so I just told him I didn't. But what I did is I was like, okay, he's going to be gone on my birthday. I, wh what I wanted him to do is realize, oh, I shouldn't do that. I should be a good good future husband, good boyfriend and stay here for her 50th birthday. But, but he didn't, you know, he was just a bachelor guy. And all he thought about was going out with the, his guy friends to this rugby tournament. So I was like, okay, what can I do on my birthday? If he's going to be gone, what can I do to make my birthday all that it can be? What can I do that would make my birthday really happy, really abundant filled um, and so what I did is I said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to call my girlfriends and my college besties, and I'm going to see who wants to get together and go wedding dress shopping. So that's what I did. And I remember thinking on that day that I was kind of glad my fiance was in Las Vegas at a rugby because <laughs> I thought I am having more fun with my girlfriends on my 50th birthday doing this than I ever would have had with him being around. So that goes just to show you 
that you have to be kind of in charge if you want it to be, you know, if you want to turn out the way that you want your birthday to turn out. Um, and so, yeah, so those are my tips um, in terms of planning ahead. Um, just think about it in advance. If your birthday is a few months out, start to plan now where you want to be, what you want to be doing, what would make you happy. There's nothing wrong with that. A lot of times we think, oh my gosh, that is so selfish because it's, you know, it's, it's about us. But for me, every, every year we get to celebrate ourselves once a year, you know, our birthday, why we're here on earth and to celebrate another year of, of being lucky enough to be here. And that deserve, you deserve to have that day yourself. And, and yeah, if you can spread it out to a week or a month, do it. I had a, a really good friend of my parents uh, and he, he was actually one of my teachers and he was really good friends with my parents. And when his wife turned 60 for 60 days before her birthday, he did 60 days of Nancy. And I thought, what a loving thing to do. So if you have somebody who's turning, uh, you know, whatever age, cause you could do 57 days or 75 days of whoever, um, or, or, or put it, put a plug in for, for your, your, you know, somebody to do it for you. <laughs> so, but what he did is he planned for 60 days and he had every single day for the 60 days leading up to her 60th birthday, something happened special for her. And he, he called like old friends and said, can you give her a call? So it, it, it was not things that it wasn't like a gift every day, but it was something special, something, some, somebody thought of her and reached out to her or gave, she, he gave her something like a, a card from somebody, but it was just something unique for 60 days leading up to her birthday. And he called it 60 days of Nancy. I'll always remember that and think that was so, just so neat, neat to do. So I need to, I need to do that for my husband is actually what I need to do. Another thing that I love uh, birthday related is that Darren Hardy, uh, who wrote the compound effect, he, he did uh, a jar. Um, like he had this big, like cookie jar, imagine. And he wrote a note, something he loved about his wife every single day leading up to her birthday. And then he presented it to her. I don't know how long in advance. I don't remember how long in advance he did it for her, but she told him that was the best birthday present she ever got. I did that one year for like, for the, for a whole year, I put something that like just a special memory from that day that I wanted, you know, just wrote down on paper, something that happened that day that was a happy memory. And I folded up the sheet of paper and I put it in a, in like a, this big glass jar and I did that every day. And at the end of the year, I sat down and emptied it and like went through all those notes. And it was like, so cool to remember those little things that you didn't think were much, but you wrote them down and you remembered them. So that kind of like goes into that whole, like writing down something nice about somebody and keeping track of it for several days, for you know months, and then giving it to them as a gift. And what, what one of the things that he said that happened from that is that he started to actually appreciate her more. Uh, because when you, it's almost like these positive affirmations, you know, you do them for yourself to make yourself feel better, but it's almost like affirming this other person and how much you love them or th the things you like about them. And you're focused on the positive instead of like, oh my gosh, they didn't unload the dishwasher or, oh my gosh, they didn't take out the trash or whatever, like might irritate you that day. Instead, your brain is focused on something good. And so putting that in a jar every day, it made him love her more is what he said. And so it was just reaffirming the things he liked about her. And he was like forgetting like something that might have irritated him before when he's like, his mind is in such a positive space. So I love that. So, so plan ahead and always uh, remember other people when, even when it's your day, but think about how you can make somebody else's day special uh, and, and their birthday special. So, and the other thing that I, I tip is that don't age ahead. So I, I don't know if you're guilty of this, but this is my, my, my life. I've done this and that's to celebrate where you are today. So what I would do is I would say, I'm going to be 63 my next birthday. So I would like age ahead of myself. 
And instead of saying, I am 62 and I'm so happy to be 62 for every day until I'm 63. And so I've really gotten very uh, aware of that. So when somebody says, how old, I hear it all the time. So somebody says, oh, I'm going to be 62 my next birthday, or I'm going to be like 50, I'm going to be 60 my next birthday. You're friggin' 59. And so say you're 59 and celebrate every single minute of being 59. Uh, so I've, I've, I've caught myself doing that and I'm like, no, darn it. I'm 62. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, celebrate it. <laughs> and I have a funny story behind that too. So my ex-husband and I went to, we planned to go to, uh, this Island in the Bahamas, Eleuthera. It's a really cool Island. And I remember we were getting ready for dinner on my birthday and I, was standing in front of the mirror and I, I made some comments, some silly comment, like, I don't look so bad for 46, do I? And my ex-husband said, well, you're not 46, you're 45. And I was like, what, what? I was like, I, I like got a whole year back because I had been saying, you know, I am, I'm going to be 45 for so long that I like felt 45. So when it was my birthday, I thought I was a year older. So that is hilarious. So that can happen. And so I was like, I, I like stole a whole year of my life mentally because I was so, I was aging myself ahead. So my tip there is don't age ahead. Always say the age you are, not the age you're gonna be because you're not there yet. <laughs> so celebrate it, celebrate where you are. And the last thing is always have a list to look forward to for the future. So, it, it, you know, I talk about planning ahead. So, you know, planning ahead, but that's more about birthday focus, like plan ahead where you want to be and what you want to be doing for your birthday. So, you know, it's not, don't leave it up to other people, take control. So, you know, we, we set these ex expectations on other people and then we get disappointed. So th this is a different than planning ahead. So planning ahead was around like what you want to do on your birthday, this, this planning ahead is like having this list of after your birthday, right? So, so I'm going to be 63. What do I want to have happen to me the year that I'm 63? What do I want my 63rd year to be all about? So what do I, what, how can I make my, my, my this year better than my last year? You know, a lot of times we reset on January 1st. How about we reset on our birthday, right? So let's think about, and it's been tough with the pandemic, right? So my, my focus this year was, heck, we're, I'm done with the pandemic. You know, I'm going to get back out there. I did travel a little bit, you know, in, in the end, in the end of 2021, and it just lit me up so much to be back out there on an airplane and connecting with other people. And so for me, I'm like, okay. What does 63 look like? How, how am I going to make it better? I always want the next year to be better than the last year. So what can I do to make it all the more abundant, all the more, so much good? What can I do? Oops, I was flailing my hands and I lost my video. <laughs> so I had to reconnect. But yeah, so what can I do? that will make this year be even better than last year. And so I have some trips planned. I'm very excited about what's to come. I'm excited that I'll be in Florida the beginning of my 63rd year. Uh, yeah. And so we have a lot to look forward to. And so instead of viewing it as another year older, how about another year better? Another year of looking at the glass half full, another year of looking for the good in everything and keeping that the focus. So have a great next year, whenever your birthday is, and make sure to plan ahead, don't age ahead and have a list to look forward to and happy Valentine's day. <laughs>